my name is Lindsay and I'm a researcher at the Centre for Clinical Microbiology at UCL. Today we're going to go through how to do rapid barcoding um, using the RBK114 kit. So this comes in either 24 or 96 samples um, and you can see these are the items within, uh, within the box. Today I'm going to show you how to do it with six samples just to um, speed up time. What I've also created, um, and you can access this by looking at the link below, um, is a spreadsheet um, and here you can input all of the information. So anywhere that has a sort of pale yellow um, box, this is information to fill up. So you can see that you've got sample ID, um, the cubic concentration of your genomic DNA that you've put in. So you need to cubit your DNA before you start. And also it's very, very important to identify the size of the DNA as well. Um, this is because um, if you put in samples with different sizes, so you might have some that are 60 kb, you might have some that are 30 kb, um, they don't barcode evenly. So ideally you want to have samples that are all the same, um, roughly the same size. Um, so you can use the tape station, you can use a bioanalyzer, or you can use gel electrophoresis to identify that. But I thoroughly recommend doing this for native DNA, for genomic DNA, because rubbish in, rubbish out very much. If you have sheared DNA, then it just doesn't sequence as well. So I thoroughly recommend making sure that your DNA is really good to start with. The first step is to prepare our DNA. Um, so we've got our genomic DNA and also nuclease free water. So on the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet will calculate automatically how much DNA you need to put in and how much water you need to put in. Um, this is to make up 10 microliters in total. So I'll do that now. So that's the water added. Now we just need to add our samples. The next step is to add the rapid barcodes. Um, so they come if you've got the 24 kit in groups of 24 or if you've got the 96 one in 96. So I've got six samples so I'm going to add six barcodes or at least I'm going to add barcode one to six. So we can mix these by flicking them gently and then putting them in a separate fusion to spin them back down. In a thermocycler, incubate the tubes at 30 degrees for two minutes and then 80 degrees for two minutes. We're then going to pull all of the samples into a low bind tube. We have 69 microliters and we're going to add an equal volume, so 69 microliters of ampure beads. These need to be resuspended before you use them, so just make sure that it's homogenous. Mix it by giving it a flick and then put it on the cooler shaker for 10 minutes at room temperature. Once that's mixed, you can spin it down if there's liquid on the side, and then it needs to go on the magnetic rack. Whilst the beads are moving towards the magnet, you can prepare 80% ethanol. So this needs to be prepared fresh every time you do this. What you'll see after a few minutes is the magnetic beads um, will have gone to the back next to the magnet and taken the DNA with them. And what's left will be clear liquid, which you now need to remove. Be very gentle at this stage because the beads can become unstuck and we want them to stay on the magnet. is just my waste bottle. What we now need to do is wash the pellet with one milliliter of ethanol that we prepared earlier. So you gently put the front of the tube away from the mag uh, magnetic beads, add the one mil, Move that and do the same again. Leave it for around 30 seconds 
and then we're going to remove that ethanol. And this time we want to get as much of the ethanol out as possible. So what I tend to do is use a big pipette to begin with and then use a smaller gauge pipette to try and remove the last of the liquid because it's easier to not disturb the pellet this way. We then need to leave the pellets dry. This takes around 30 seconds, but really it's by eye making sure the pellet isn't too dry and also isn't too damp. Once you're happy with the dryness of your pellet, you can take it off the magnetic rack and we're gonna add 15 microliters of elution buffer. Make sure that you've got all of the beads into the elution buffer because we want the DNA to come off the beads and into the elution buffer. We're gonna spin it down, incubate the DNA in the elution buffer for 10 minutes at room temperature. Once the incubation has finished, we then need to put the DNA and the beads back on the magnet. This is to separate the beads from the DNA, which now should be in the elution buffer. So again, give it a round at least one minute. What you then want when the beads are separate is to remove the elution buffer. It says in the protocol, remove and retain the full volume evaluate, but actually you only need one to do the qubit and then 11 for the next step in the protocol. So I tend to just take 12 out because if you try and take the whole lot, you do sometimes get beads with it. So I find that it's better to just take what you need rather than take everything. So in here you have 12 microliters, so you need to take one microliter out to do the qubit um, and you can input the qubit score into um, the Excel spreadsheet and then the rest of it, the 11 microliters, is left for the next steps. The next thing we need to do is make up the rapid adapter and the adapter buffer in a separate tube, which will make up five microliters. And then we need to add one microliter of this rapid adapter mix to our DNA. Now we've got our sample, it's time to prepare for loading the flow cell. And the first thing we need to do is prepare the flush buffer. In the new Eppendorf tube, we need to prepare 1,170 microliters of flow cell flush. And 30 microliters of FCT or flow cell feather. You can also optionally add in five microliters of bovine albumin. So usually you would do this attached to the computer, but because I'm recording it, I'm gonna do it on here. So this is the min iron, and we're gonna put the flow cell on to the min iron. So you can see that it should match, it's got these here and just put it in underneath. So where we're going to load this is under this spot here. For a better more detailed video, um, click on the link. The most important thing is not to add air bubbles, so try and suck any air up first, so you should see you'll get a little bit of yellow. We're then going to add 200 microliters of the wash buffer that we just made. This should slowly turn the screen from yellow to white. We're then going to add a further 800 to completely flush. This you need to then set aside for five minutes and we can prepare the rest.
rest of the library while we wait. So we have 12 microliters of our DNA library. We're gonna add 37.5 microliters of sequencing buffer. And 25.5 microliters of library beads. And again, a bit like the ampule beads, make sure that they're well mixed. This is your final library, and this is what we're going to load onto the flow cell. In total, we have 75 microliters. Give it a gentle flick just before you load it. And this time, we're going to add it to the spot on hold. So you just drop it on above the hole, and it should suck the DNA and the beads through. The only thing left to do now is close up all the ports and add the cover. Close them in iron and then this can be put on the machine. For the video of how to set up a sequencing run, see the link below.